Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Agent Sedge. My name is Ryan Palomini. Today we're gonna to talk about winning the recruiting game. Now let me ask you this question. Would you follow you? It's a question that you have to ask yourself pretty often because would you follow you? So obviously when people get into the insurance business or look, this could be, this could pertain to anything. This could be the real estate business. This could be, you know, insurance. This could be anything that you're leading an organization that you want to recruit in salespeople or even recruiting in staff members. The first question you have to ask yourself, and it's a tough question and it's not asked enough is would you follow you? You see, when we get into the insurance world, right, and, and I know that this world is really all about recruit, 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 build a team, build a team, build a team, and that's all great, but the problem is, is who's going to follow you? Meaning, if, if this is your first day, and you're going to go out there and try to recruit a bunch of people, I understand you need to use third-party validation or your upline success to get started, but the reality is, is that's going to fade out pretty quickly. And I'm telling you this from experience, right? So 12 years ago, when I started in the financial world, that's what I was taught. You have to build a team. You have to recruit. You have to recruit because you want that financial freedom. It, it, it's the dream that's being sold. And don't be wrong. I get it. Everybody wants to be financially free. Everybody wants to have time freedom. But what I found, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, what I found is if I'm not out there kicking butt and taking names, people are going to look at you and eventually go, you're telling me to do something you're not doing, right? So that has to become the number one trend in your recruiting efforts. And what it comes down to is figuring out what your business model is going to be. What I mean by that is this. Depending on what sector of the financial industry you're in, and we'll use finances for a second, if you're in the mortgage protection final expense business, that's going to be a very different business model than if you're in the uh, financial advisory or big annuity, big life cases. See, that those are two different things. One is more advanced than the other, and one requires more leadership from you than the other, for real. Because think about this. If you're going to step up into this world over here with the more advanced markets, but you don't know how to sell an annuity, why would a big producer follow you? And, and, I, and I've watched this trend over the course of, of the last 12 years of people trying to recruit. And I've seen people build really, really big organizations. And as you look at the commonality of the people building these big organizations, they're out leading from the front. Meaning they're not going, you need to do this. You need to do this. If I was you, I would do this, this, and this. Meanwhile, they're sitting on their couch eating Cheetos, right? Like it doesn't work like that. If you're going to attract big producers, you first have to become a big producer. So I'll give you an example. When I transitioned over from mortgage protection, final expense, to the big annuity, big uh, IUL, big whole life, into the assets under management and running a tax firm, right, that's a totally different recruiting pattern. And in order for me to attract these $5 million producers, I needed to become a $10 million producer. So if you're going to try and, you're, and attract these big producers, but you're not doing it, it's never going to work. So here's what, here's what you have to do. Again, you got to first go out and be the big producer. So, you know, I spent three years of my life learning how to become a $10 million annuity IUL assets under management producer in a year. And what happened was when I started doing that, you become more attractive to the market. Therefore, a, a guy or a woman over here who's a financial advisor and maybe they're doing $2 million, and they want to get to five. You see, if, if, you're not, if you're doing two million, how are you going to teach that person doing two million to get to five when you're not even at five yet? Right? So you have to be out there leading the charge, leading by example. And that's what recruiting all comes down to. Because you can only fake it till you make it so long. You can only use your upline success for so long. At some point, your team's going to look at you and go, dude, I mean, when are you going to start doing the things you're asking us to do? How are you going to teach me how to become a $10 million producer, right, when you're doing two? And I'm going to promise you, the reason that I got into the annuity world was because of that question I had to ask my upline. Like, man, all right, here we are, right? My team is bigger than yours. Uh, 
my production is higher than yours. I'm recruiting more people than you. Where do we go from here? I mean, I was confused going like, it, it's, I understand like you, you, you got me here, but to get to the next level, I need somebody who's up here. So I went out and actively seeked a mentor that was doing 20 million. Like I was doing about a million a year in production. I mean, barely. And I was going, all right, this guy's doing 20. He can show me the way, right? And, and so that allowed me to learn and to really decrease my learning curve to learn how to become a big producer because I had the opportunity to sit there and watch somebody who was doing it, watch what their uh, marketing strategies were, watch how they interacted with clients, watch what their strategies for building a retirement plan for somebody was holistically. And that pattern of success allowed me to catapult myself to become a $5 million a year producer the first year when I started working in that industry, right? And then I went from there, I was like, okay, I learned how to become a $5 million producer, then I became a $10 million. Then what I did is I went back and I said, look, I know my friends over here, you're wanting more than final expense mortgage protection. I figured it out, let me show you. See, that's very different. That's a very different leadership style approach. It's a very different way to build your organization when you can go, look, I figured it out, let me show you how to do it. Because what's gonna happen is your agents that are working underneath you that are doing maybe just final expense and mortgage protection, they're either going to become burnt out, they're going to get to the point where I was, where I was going, now what? Like, I'm a $20 million life insurance producer, I'm, I'm sorry, $20,000 a month life insurance producer. Uh, I, I built this organization, and but I still need to get here. What do I do next? And my upline couldn't tell me that. So if you have a downline, if you're actively recruiting and building a downline, you need to be prepared for the day when your agents come to you and ask you that question. So it's up to you to be constantly elevating yourself to the next level. Even today, you know, I'm going, all right, we built a $20 million uh, production as a team. Now I got to get to $40, $50 million in production internally so that I can teach someone how to go from 5 to 10, 10 to 20. Right? I can't teach you how to do $30 million a year in production. I haven't done it yet. I've done 20, but not 30. But I can show you somebody who's done 30, so it's possible. Right? That's how you build an organization. You build it by leading from the front. Because again, think of how valuable you are to the market. We talk a lot about becoming more attractive to the market. Tell me that if you're doing $10 million a year in production, that you are not very attractive to the market. And other people are going to see what you're doing and auto, like automatically become more attracted to you and want to be a part of your organization. See, that's what happened when I started Top Rank Advisors. I was just a $5 million solo producer. Then I got to 10 and I was like, hey, let me show you what I'm doing. And just word of mouth was like, hey, this, this guy knows what he's doing. Like the production is proven, meaning I was perfectly fine showing everybody, you know, the production reports. That's another thing, is, is, your, is your upline willing to do that? Like, are they willing to show you the real numbers? If not, that's a problem. It means that they don't have the proof of production to be able to show you. So again, if you're looking to grow this organization, it starts with you. And I know that you're being really pushed hard to you know, make a list of all your friends and family and go recruit and go recruit and go recruit. Look, your friends and family are gonna do the same thing as if you were network marketing. They're gonna to wanna to know well, show me you go out and do it first and then come back to me. Now, you may get lucky and find some studs. I mean, don't get me wrong. That happens, but it's not, doesn't happen on, a, on, a, on occasions normally, right? It, you may find one or two people that you can run with. Maybe some of your best friends are looking for an opportunity. That's a great situation. It's a great scenario. Didn't work for me. That wasn't my situation. That wasn't the situation for the majority of people. But I promise you this. When you go out there and you become attractive and you become a high-level producer, you're going to be very attractive. You're going to be very valuable to the market. It's going to allow you to really grow your business by multiplication versus addition. Okay? So the question that I get all the time is this. Ryan, you know, I, I know that I want to be out of the field. I want to have the financial freedom. I want to have the time freedom. I'm going to build this big organization so I no longer have to work. <laughs> I think that is mixed I, there's mixed emotions on that, but I also think that it's not the correct way to think. Meaning this, I'm telling you from experience here that I have built organizations where I was able to get out of the field and built an organization up to where the income paid all of my bills, 
paid all of the expenses at the office. And I was like, cool, I don't have to do anything anymore. Like I'm in, I'm in cruise control now. The minute you go in cruise control, if you are not, if you don't have your thumb on your organization, it will spiral out of control because what's going to happen is you're going to have downline agents that see you in cruise control and go, oh, cool. I'm going to do the same thing. And all of a sudden the production starts dying. It starts dying from, even if you're internally with your staff, it'll start dying because your culture changes. So it's up to you again. Yes, I know you want to get out of the field, but let me let, let's let's break this down for a second. Let's look at the numbers because the numbers tell the story. And this is what always drove me crazy in a lot of these organizations that I've seen is somebody makes 200 grand a year. Phenomenal amount of money for for the average person. It's a lot of money. However, are we talking about net or are we talking about gross? Because it's very different. You know, it's, it's the illusion that I've always seen people going on stage and getting their six-figure income ring, right? You, you know what I'm talking about if you're part of these organizations. You know, the person up there getting their 100000 Look, I got my $100,000 income ring when I was 25. I got to go on stage, walk across the stage, get my income ring, show off to everybody that I was a six-figure income earner, and the next month I couldn't pay my rent. It's an illusion because it's gross versus net. I don't care how much you've made. I want how much money you kept, right? But I was a six-figure income earner thinking that I could get out of the field because that's what it was preached is when you get to this level, you just walk away and then you just recruit, recruit. It doesn't work that way because you are now reliant upon someone else creating your income. And when that person quits, guess what happens? You got to go back into the field to start you know, getting your momentum where that you lost, where you could have just kept going and going. And you have to think about this differently. This is a business, meaning if you want to get to 200 grand and set cruise control, that's up to you. But there are consequences of doing that. Because if you're relying on other people to live your lifestyle, those people are going to watch that too. And they're going to be saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm working to fund your lifestyle <laughs> and, and I'm taking a pay cut for that? No, no, no. I'm going to go find an organization where I can make more money, higher comp, and my upline treats me better. See, there's a big difference. There's a big difference in how you build an organization. So this is why I keep saying you have to figure out what your business model is. Because, I mean, listen, at some point, maybe if you're making a million dollars a year in overrides, there does come a point where you going into the field does not make sense because your time is more valuable than making a thousand bucks in the field if you're making a million dollars a year. That if you're making a million bucks a year, that means that you've built a skill set that allows you to become more of a leadership role where you can get out of the field and be mentoring agents. That does not take place at two hundred thousand dollars a year. Because you're not going to be able to survive on it. Why? Because you run a business. That means you have business expenses. That means you have an office, your staff, your leads, you know, your own personal life. Oh, by the way, taxes that a lot of you aren't even paying that you have, you know, you're paying the IRS in installments. Like, don't get me started on that. If we're going to be real for a second, let's be real. The majority of the people you see walking across stage, I'm just, I know I'm, feels like I'm bashing it here, but I'm just telling you the truth because I'm sick of seeing it in the industry. Most of the people that people idolize on stage, they're all on payment plans with the IRS because they're blowing their money. See, what's your business strategy? I never wanted to be like that. I didn't want to be, I was that person at 25 on stage going, man, look at me. I made hundred thousand dollars. I'm the man. I'm the man. It got me nowhere, but broke. Like it's not cute. So you have to be in the field pumping money into your pocket constantly because if you're going to expand your business, you can't do it relying on the other people to do it for you. Look, I could today, with my organization, I could walk away from it all and pay for everything. But guess what? It's going to stump my growth because why would I do that when I can go out and make, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars a year on my own pen and keep dumping that back into my business to build a marketing company, to build a media company, what you see here. I can't do this if I'm making 200 grand a year. This studio alone, wouldn't, I couldn't afford to do it. So I stay in the field because it allows me to keep pumping money back into my business. Meanwhile, see, this is where you have to be smart. This is the strategy. You use your overrides to get out of the field so you can not have to work anymore. I use my overrides to get dumped back into marketing so that when I pay for marketing, it's not coming out of my own pocket, which means my sales are 100% profit. 
l let me say that again because I want to make sure you're understanding that. You're using your overrides to get out of the field so you can stop working. I'm using my overrides to pay for my marketing so that when I make a sale, it's 100% profit. See the difference? I could profit eight, nine hundred thousand dollars a year, or I could have to come out of my pocket two hundred grand to pay for marketing and be less profitable. So how are you using your your business, your money that you you know make in your business? These are all things I know. Listen, this is a lot. I'm throwing a lot at you. I understand that, but I want you to understand. Like you have to go in with a strategy for your business because the, the I'm getting out of the field. Is a, is a really short-term strategy, especially when you're not ready to do it, when your finances don't allow you to do it, and you can get into trouble very quickly. And I'll give you, the, I'll give you an example. When I was recruiting and I got out of the field, I had a producer that I was like, this is my guy. Like, this is the one. I, you know, I, I found the person that's going to get me to the, you know, whatever. The problem was that person was a scumbag. Then I didn't know that he was writing fraudulent business. So here I am out of the field living off of my overrides, thinking everything was good, and I get hit with a $20,000 roll-up. I wasn't prepared for that. I was thinking I'm in cruise control. Wasn't prepared for that. Are you prepared for that day? Do you have twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in capital reserves? If you're going to get out of the field, do you have six figures in the bank? Do you have $200,000 in the bank? Can you afford to take a massive hit with you getting out of the field. I want you to think about these things because people get out of the field still living kind of paycheck to paycheck, meaning I'm making 20 grand a month and that could go away instantly. Ask some of the top people in your organizations how many times they've gotten a roll up. Ask them how many people that they thought was the guy or the woman and they quit and lost everything and had to rebuild. Be smart. Pay attention. I want you to be logical in this business. I want you to be logical about what you see. Is it an illusion or is it real? Is the person walking across stage being promoted as the almighty? What's their real personal life look like? Would you follow them? If you knew what their real personal life looked like, would you follow them? By the way, if you are that person, would you follow you? Listen, we're going to talk a lot more about this on some upcoming shows. I hope this has been helpful for you. I want you to a couple of key takeaways. Number one is... Would you follow you? Would, are you the leader that you want to be following? Number two, what is your business strategy? What's your short-term and long-term strategy? Number three, what is your money that you're making, the money you're making in your business? How are you using that? That goes to, become, that goes to part of your short-term and long-term strategy is how you are going to use your money to grow your business. Okay, listen, we're going to keep talking on this topic a lot. I love the topic of recruiting. I could talk about this for the next three hours, but take this into consideration. Think about this for a second. Figure out who you're following and look at their patterns. Is that the kind of person you want to be or are you going to outgrow that person? If so, find a mentor that's where you want to be. I promise you, I don't care where you are in your, in your career right now. If you, if you want to strive for excellence, find someone who's there. Follow that person. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it for granted. Find them. Follow them. They'll take you to the next level. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, remember, hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you like this, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next show. If you've ever wanted to learn how to write over $5 million a year in annuity volume, Level of Advisors Academy was built for you. In this academy, we talk about things like how to do massive annuity production, assets under management, big whole life in IUL cases. Look, five years ago, before I built this product, I didn't even know how to spell the word annuity, but a simple system that I learned allowed me to write over $5 million a year in annuity production and now over $10 million a year. I took what I know, the system that I've built, and I put it into Level Up Advisors Academy for you to be able to have access to it 24-7 on demand. If you've ever want to take your business to the next level, this academy was built for you. Click the link below to get access today. Look forward to work with you in the future.